Well, let's discuss the economic situation in Turkey, particularly given President Erdogan's re-election with Erdal Yalçin, Professor of International Economics at Konstanz University of Applied Sciences. Thanks so much for being with us. So inflation is falling, it's just it below 40%. So does that mean that Erdogan's unorthodox approach to bringing down inflation is actually working? Uh, certainly not, certainly not. What we see is indeed that inflation has declined compared to uh, what we have seen in April from 44 to around 39 percent. However, the main reason for this reduction in inflation has been a so-called zero grasp uh, prices. We had elections last month and President Erdogan decided to subsidize household gases and the Statistical Institute in Turkey just interpreted this uh, subsidized prices as a drop in gas prices. And that's the main reason for this low inflation rate. But I need to be very clear here, uh, this number does not reflect the difficult economic situation Turkish citizens are facing, not only last month, but for the last two years. So this free gas policy is just a, a pre-election giveaway then? It's not something that can be kept up long term? Definitely not. The, the free grass uh, was, uh, was a present uh, an election-related policy. And at the same time, we need to uh, basically uh, be very clear that Turkey's public deficit has been increasing over the last uh, two years for a misguided uh, economic uh, uh, interest rate policy. So Turkey basically has a positive growth rate for the whole economy. It's one of the fastest growing economies, but this growth is driven by uh, very low interest rates and high debt, uh, private and also public debt. But this cannot and is not a sustainable policy. And therefore, uh, the, the, the space for maneuver in Turkey is very small. And uh, that, uh, that's the reason, I think, why the government also has been appointing uh, uh, new people with a different uh, credibility with respect to economic policy. Yeah, there are new people in place. And the noises that we've been getting from them on the sort of economic approach are the sort of thing that investors would have wanted to hear, particularly about, you know, focusing on inflation and at least hinting at the idea of a a change in direction, but is there actually likely to be one? Yeah, I mean, Mehmet Shimshek has been appointed uh, a finance minister. He was already finance minister uh, before the misguided uh, interest rate policy started. And he made a very remarkable statement when he came to, uh, to power uh, uh, over the weekend. He said, we will return to a uh, orthodox policy uh, based on rational grounds, meaning he obviously criticized also the past policy. And as you rightly indicate, the big question is in how far the new finance minister uh, jointly with the central bank can really implement uh, uh, an orthodox policy. Because we have seen in the past that the preferences of the president of Turkey has been always having high growth rate, whatever the price is for inflation and the exchange rate, the lira has been depreciating heavily. So the next weeks already will decide on uh, uh, in how far we can trust on what the fi new finance minister has declared so far. Because Erdogan has aligned himself so closely with this policy, this unorthodox policy up until now, is it even possible for there to be a, a backpedaling and a change in policy that also manages to save face for President Erdogan? Yeah, this is the big question. You know, Turkey is in actually in the worst situation you can imagine. On the one hand, Turkey needs growth because it has a huge young population. And on the other hand, the reserves of the central bank have been depleted, trust has been destroyed. So there will be no painless return to an uh, orthodox policy. So uh, then the, my expectation is that the challenge for the, the new finance minister will be keeping the balance, satisfying the expectation of the president still with a positive growth rate. And on the other hand, reducing this debt-driven growth by increasing interest rate and stabilizing the, the Turkish currency. However, it is very unlikely uh, to keep growth at these levels uh, uh, at, and at the same time stabilizing the macroeconomic indicator. So there will be this political uh, challenge 
uh, that the minister has to face, either uh, gaining trust and support from international investors or having this uh, potential uh, dispute with the president with respect to a declining, heavily declining uh, national economic growth rate. You know, we should talk about the Turkish people and how they feel about their current economic situation because they're presumably undergoing some hardship through the state of inflation and the, the weakness of the lira. But at the same time, President Erdogan has just been re-elected despite aligning himself very closely with those economic policies. So what's happening there? Do they not blame Erdogan for that situation or is it not affecting them as much as we might think? I think, you know, uh, electing a president definitely is not only uh, an issue about the economic situation. Actually, this, uh, for Erdogan, the situation couldn't have been worse. We had also this terrible earthquake in February and the management was very problematic. Until today, it's not very clear what is happening in the southeastern earthquake region. But still people uh, elected him. My expect understanding is that the opposition uh, parties did not present a convincing alternative program, not only with respect to economics, but also to these difficult topics like how the relations should lo uh, look like in the future with respect to the European Union, uh, what is the standing in international political uh, uh, topics. Erdogan seems to have much more trust in, uh, in, in the majority of the society with respect to these uh, political issues, uh, uh, or differently stated, Erdogan won these elections, I believe, because the opposition was simply too weak with its arguments. You mentioned the earthquake, the human cost of which is, you know, unfathomable. But in terms of the economic costs to Turkey, it appears it's going to have a, a major effect on GDP for this year. But if we can set that aside, is the Turkish economy in decline or is it, is it, is it recovering from these policies that have been in place for the past few years? The Turkish economy in real terms is in decline. And the reason is what we have seen over the last two years, particularly after the introduction of this low interest rate policy, real investment has been on the decline. Just to give you some examples, for, there was the intention of uh, Germany's biggest car, uh, car producer, Volkswagen, to invest 1 billion uh, euros in Turkey to produce uh, cars, but they stopped this investment. And many other examples uh, can be listed here. So, uh, and in, in per capita income, for example, today, the average household in Turkey earns less than what, uh, uh, what a Turkish household was earning in the year 2008. So the individual decline in income is obvious. And this is now coupled with a challenge that there will be not a costless return to a conventional economic policy, it is very likely that we will observe still a decline in the coming uh, months and potentially years uh, for the Turkish economy until the macroeconomic policy has been normalized. Well, it's going to be interesting to see where the Turkish economy goes under a, a renewed President Erdogan. Erdal Yalcin, a professor of international economics at Constance University of Applied Sciences. Thank you so much for joining us again on DW Business. Thank you.